Good morning. It's wonderful to see each of you today and those who are joining online, we welcome you. Such a wonderful opportunity for, to, for us to gather and worship together this morning. Just a reminder that each one of you this morning, in whatever you might have experienced throughout this past week, whatever is on your heart and mind today, you are invited to participate and to worship in whatever way is meaningful for you today. For on any given Sunday, some of us are ready to celebrate and to express our joy, and others of us are, might be ready to cry or are feeling dismayed by what is happening in the world around us. All of these are authentic expressions of our life experiences and what we bring into this time of worship together. And all of them have an equal place here. And so I invite you today, in whatever way is most meaningful, if you want to sing aloud, if you want to share something, or if you want to just quietly absorb and feel encouraged by being together in a community of faith. This morning, we have the honor of being able to share a part of our blessings, not just through our offerings at the end of our service, but also through our pennies from heaven, which Holly will share a little bit more about if you're unfamiliar with that part of our third Sunday services. If you're unfamiliar with our bulletin, I just invite you to take a peek inside. You'll notice that there's times when there's an asterisk along the left-hand side. And when that happens, that's where you're invited to stand in body or in spirit as a part of the service. Sometimes that's to sing, sometimes that's during prayer, sometimes that's um, just a part of where we stand up um, for a reading. And so I invite you to take note of that so you know and feel a part of what is happening in the flow of our service today. All of our songs will be from the United Methodist Hymnal. Lauren, it is wonderful to have you with us today. So glad to, to have live music. Those of you who might know somebody who likes to watch on Zoom, I would encourage you, this might be a day to, to fill out a hug alert for them. We're, we are having technical difficulties. The internet is down. They're not able to join us live. Let us let us let them know that we're thinking about them and that we miss their their presence with us that we take note of that um, and so if that's something that that um, the holy spirit places on your heart today i just invite you to fill out one of these hug alerts um, and put it in the basket at the end of the service and in the same the same idea if there's somebody else that you notice not here today whether they're traveling whether they're uh, spending some time with family whether they have something going on in their life that keeps them from being here. Such a great opportunity to fill out one of the hug alerts as well and let them know that they are missed, that they are thought about, that they're in your thoughts and prayers. And then it's not just about those that we don't see here today. It's also about what is happening in your lives. Perhaps there's some things on your heart and mind today, and that includes those of you watching online. The prayer requests that forms that are here or in the pew pocket in front of you, and if they're not there, raise your hand so we can get them to you. Sometimes we're not quite ready to share out loud what is on our heart and mind. Fill out one of these prayer request forms. You can put these in the baskets at the back of the sanctuary as well, and we will keep you in prayer. If it's something that you would like included in our prayer list, um, which is in the bulletin, um, Make a little note of that, and we'll include that um, in an ongoing way. So many different ways that we can provide support for each other and encouragement, and we want to know how best to be a support for you. If we don't share that with each other, we don't know, and it can feel like an isolated experience as we navigate life. But as a community of faith, we can come together, we can encourage each other, and we can draw on, on God's help to do that, and then let that radiate out to those around us in our community. Today, as we settle into this time of worship, I just invite you to, to take that deep breath that helps to bring you into this moment, setting aside all those things that await you later, the 
many to-do lists or the, the travel that might be taking place or whatever it might be. Just bringing you into this moment here today. And as you do so, I invite you to, to recall the ways that God has shown up in your life in, in ways that brought you encouragement and joy and hope throughout this past week. you caught those glimpses and reminders that connected you and helped you to, to continue to persevere through the week. And if there are anyone that you would like to share that out loud, I invite you to raise your hand. I'll bring the microphone around to you. Um, just a way to encourage each other and continue to remind each other that that, there, that we do not travel through this life alone and that no matter what is going on around us, God is with us. Is there anyone who would like to share out loud today? I just encourage you to continue to take notice of your own personal life. That's really, again, what the invitation is all about. Sometimes we, we share that out loud. Sometimes we share it throughout the week as we see each other. Um, just take note throughout this week ahead and and draw encouragement for how God knows exactly what delights you, where you need encouragement. Uh, we had a nice uh, visit to Portland uh, last week and reminded of one of God's true blessings, and that is long-term friendships. And uh, we went up there, uh, and these were people that go back. The first one started uh, first grade with Jackie, first family. The next one was 1966 in Germany in the Air Force. And then it was Carson City, Nevada. And then it was San Francisco. Friends that connected with us of all those periods. And, and you get to a certain age and you really think about friends you've had and how important they were in your lives. And we certainly did. Thank you for sharing that. Is there anybody else who would like to share this morning? Uh, I don't, I, this, sound, this is going to sound funny, I know, but um, four of our five um, critters are rescues, and some of them from family, but over the years, and we've, we've watched these animals, and in particular over the last nine months with the big dog, um, mellow and be happy and learn things. One of the gifts that God that I that God gave me from the time I was very small was a way with animals, and I had a real satisfaction this week, numerous times this week, of, of seeing seeing that result in um, more calmness, more happiness, and. Just seeing these, all of these critters um, happy and content and doing well, and sometimes that, that overwhelms me with a sense of joy that they can come to our house and find a place to be loved and, and be happy. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else this morning? It won't surprise you that on my way to church this morning <laughs> that um, I felt a great sense of joy in the midst of the smoke that's out there and the, after a week of having had a fever up through Friday um, to see a bald eagle perched up high on the top of a branch facing towards me as I was driving down the freeway. And just the sun was hitting it, something through the smoky haze and whatnot. It was just brilliant. It gave me that search.
from within of that, that joy that only that kind of connection with nature that reminds me of God's presence can provide. And the theme I hear through all of the three, just that we've shared out loud, is that connection. Connection with long-term friends, connection with our pets and the animals around us, connection with nature, those things that God has provided in our life to remind us of God's presence and what specifically speaks to us in our lives. As we continue now into the rest of our service, I just invite you to continue to hold on to those things, those reminders of what gives you joy in a personal way as we listen to the ringing of our bell. Please join with me now in our call to worship, which you can find in your bulletin. This is a responsive reading. We have gathered this morning to worship and praise God. wonderful. This is our compassion to God. We have come ready to discover more of God's mysteries and miracles. How generous and caring is our unchanging God. We have gathered to share together in our common history and to experience the enrichment which that brings us. All praise and honor to God for our past and present blessings and for God's merciful and everlasting love and grace. Come, let us worship God together now. I would invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we sing our song of praise Praise my soul, the King of Heaven, number 66 of the United Methodist Hymnal.
Christ's loving God. We have gathered this morning to celebrate your presence in our lives and to offer songs of praise and worship. We have come to rejoice in your mighty acts and to retell the story of your goodness throughout history and in our lives. May your spirit guide and inspire our thoughts and actions as we spend this time in worship today. In Jesus' name. sing our song of praise, uh, excuse me, our, our prayer hymn number 454, Open My Eyes That I May See. <laughs> Not just provide handouts. 
July 14, 1944, West facilitated a shipment of cattle from Alabama to Puerto Rico to improve the fortunes of impoverished communities there. This gift of livestock set West on the pathway to founding Heifer International, expanding to support families in Ecuador and Europe, and building what is today a global effort stretching across Africa, Asia, and the Americas. Heifer has continued to evolve its ways of working <coughs> since then, but we remain laser focused on Dan West's fundamental goal, ending rural hunger and poverty. We do so by supporting locally-led community development initiatives, sustainable approaches to productive agriculture, and market-led income growth that allow farmers to thrive, not just survive. And there's a link on that page um, to some of the dates. Um, and it's actually, Dan West um, initially conceived of his uh, idea in 1938. He was a worker in the Spanish Civil War and conceived his not a cut but a cow concept providing not handouts but the means to forge better lives. And in 1944, the first shipment of livestock um, and then it just goes from there, and this gives you a list. Um, the livestock program started in, uh, in Puerto Rico, Spain, and Ecuador after World War II, and then they began to expand. They, in 1971, they were able to purchase a ranch where they do a lot of their um, planning and programming and um, a lot of other things, and that's in Arkansas. They began working with families and communities in Tanzania uh, in 1974, marking its first presence in an African country, and it just goes on from there. Um, they've been awarded um, in 1986, Reagan, uh, President Ronald Reagan um, Commission on Vol Volunteerism presented Heifer with the Volunteer Action Award. And in the 1990s, President George H.W. Bush gave Heifer the Presidential Ed Hunger Award. So this has been going on a, a long time. And over the years, I've told you how they've expanded their programs to include uh, sustainable farming and um, incorporate solar technology, how they've put pumps into villages with uh, solar operated by solar, so that women don't have women and children have, don't have to walk miles and miles and miles just to get water. They've included honeybees and fish and many other things besides the original cows. Let us pray. Dear God, we are so grateful that over the years we've been able to contribute to this program that has added, that has helped families sustain their living and go beyond subsistence farming. We are grateful for this pro the programs they send out and amazed that it's been going on for 80 years. Thank you, God, for help letting us for. Thank you, God, for our pennies that help us sustain others around the world. Amen.
reading comes from Psalm 34, verses 1 through 8, from the New Living Translation. If you'd like to follow along, it is on the reverse side of your bulletin. I will praise God at all times. I will constantly speak God's praises. I will boast only in God. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come. Let us tell of God's greatness. Let us exalt God's name together. I prayed to God, and God answered me. God freed me from all my fears. Those who look to God for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation, I prayed, and God listened. God saved me from all my troubles. For the angel of God is a guard. God surrounds and defends all who fear God. Taste and see that God is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in God. May God enrich our understanding of these words. I invite you to bow your heads for prayer. Oh God, as we look at this passage together, and as I blend that together with a lesson that I learned on my recent Camino, I pray that you will speak through me so that it is your words that we hear today, so that it is what you would have us to take to heart, that we take and absorb into our lives. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As I read this passage, I couldn't help but think of one of those moments, those mornings when I was on the Camino. I was coming out of a more industrial area. It was a, I, I had a picture I wanted to show you, several actually, but, and I'll do that sometime. But if you can just imagine coming out of a, a city area, there was a concrete pathway, and it was lined with these walls that had really cool graffiti on them, but filled with graffiti in different colors, and it was a rainy day, kind of overcast. I enjoy hiking in that kind of weather, but the overall feel was kind of just, you know, that overcast and gray and rainy. And that mixed with my ongoing internal struggles and what I was wrestling with spiritually, I was in a so-so mood as I was hiking. I was hard, it was hard for me to find happiness in the kind of setting I typically do enjoy hiking. When I read this passage, that brought that to mind because happiness isn't something that comes from within. Happiness tends to, typically, almost always, is something that is contingent upon external things that are happening. Things that, whether that's things that people give to us, that success that we achieve, something based on society standards, something that meets what we were hopeful for. Joy, on the other hand, is something that comes from that deep reservoir within when we tap into it. A reservoir that is a gift from God. It's not always so easy to tap into it when around us in the world are so many things that shift our attention, that hold us in place, that weigh us down with the uncertainty and the dismay that is this all there is? Is there hope? Is God still journeying with us? And so that story came to mind as I, of when I was walking on that day on the Camino. And there I was, I was going along in the concrete, it was a little bit uphill, making my way. And all of a sudden, from behind me, I hear this young voice singing. Caught my attention. 
It was pure joy. That voice was filled with joy. And I couldn't help but slow down. I was not walking that fast, but I slowed down and I took notice as coming from behind me and going on by was a gentleman on a bicycle and pulling behind him one of those little carts um, enclosed and inside was his young daughter. She was just singing. She didn't care about the weather. She didn't care that they were going uphill or, or whatever toys she might have been pulled away from. She didn't care the circumstances. She was filled with joy riding with her dad, spending that time knowing that she was safe and secure, drawing on those past experiences certainly when they had been on a similar route, when they had been out there experiencing life. And this clearly was a song that they shared together, something they had, because as she would be going along and she would reach this, I wish I had recorded it. Oh, I wish I had recorded it because there was something really catchy about it. And it was contagious because it filled me with joy, I'll tell you. But it also was empowering to her dad because as they're going uphill, she would reach these certain points in the song and he would be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, it just seemed to power him up that hill. Oh, what powerful things that joy can do, not just for the person receiving it, but how it radiates out to others. But it's not always easy to tap into that joy. Sometimes we get caught up in the circumstances. And I began to reflect on what is it about noticing that little girl and that experience? What is it that connected to me? And I was realizing that even though I was feeling unhappy, I was also missing feeling connected to that joy that joy that comes from within, that joy that I experience, just taking notice of how God places those things in my life where we connect, where we connect with people, we connect with our pets or nature that brings us joy in the ways that God knows delights me, delights you in the midst of our life experiences and journeys. And so there I was in the Camino and it, it, it reminded me all over again, there is joy, even in the midst of our grief, even in the midst of despair, even when we feel unhappy, because it's not contingent on anything external. It is all here, inside, just waiting to be tapped into gift that we have been given that is always available to us so that even when happiness is fleeting and it comes and goes and is dependent on external things and on others, that joy is always available because it is a gift from God and is a constant. Jesus said that he came so that we might be able to live life to the fullest. And that includes with joy. No, we won't always feel happiness. But we can always experience joy. And so as I continued on my Camino, it was all the more important that I take to heart the practice that is really important to me. There, there's, a, there's a key thing that's encouraged on the Camino. The Camino is your journey, not to be compared with anybody else's. It's about your pace. It's the route you choose to take. It's the distance you go on any given day or for the completion of your, of your Camino. Perhaps you go the whole route, or perhaps for you, 
it's a week or two. What's key for me is for the, my pace to be different than what society tends to pull me along and as I go fast. It's about finding God's pace. And by that I mean slowing down to take notice of those reminders of joy. Reminders along the way that cause me to gasp in wonder. That make me laugh from the inside that help me to feel a sense of joy and cause me to stop in my tracks to soak it in. It's slowing down and looking beyond the circumstances that can hold me back, that can hold any of us back from experiencing joy, that can hold us back from moving forward through our, our experiences in life and that can keep us from growing and processing and strengthening our relationship with God. That is what was key for me in the Camino, that even now as, as I'm continuing to process and I still feel disoriented in my spiritual relationship with God and my journey, what I have noticed is that by tapping into and connecting to those sources of joy I was able to continue to move along in the Camino, and it has stretched me, and it has caused me to grow in ways, in spiritual ways that I had not expected, and it has started to deepen my relationship with God in ways that is helping me to not just feel joy, but gives me that renewed trust and confidence and sense of hope. It's a daily, intentional choice. The joy is there, but we have to choose to look beyond the circumstances and tap into it. Some of those ways were not just the joy of seeing a little girl riding with her dad. It was also in the different nature that I saw, the, the young animals, but there was even the things that made me laugh. There was one picture I wanted to show you, is that there literally is a case of grass being greener on the other side of the fence. As I came around the corner of one path, I discovered there was a, some cows and some donkeys in a, in a meadow and fenced in. And there was a cow kneeled down um, with her hips up, leaning way through a fence with her neck stretched out so that she could enjoy the grass on the other side of the fence. I couldn't help but laugh. That kind of joy that comes from taking notice of those little things. And if you notice on the front of your bulletin, thankfully there is one picture. This was one example. It was a rainy day. And as I was walking along, I couldn't, I, I took notice. I saw these little, little mushrooms tucked away inside this not hole in the tree. And it, obviously I paused and I took pictures, which helped me to just now, as I sometimes go through experiences, of taking pictures is one of my spiritual practices. It helps me to pause and remember on those difficult days, those examples of joy and how God knows what delights me. This picture also makes me think of like they're collected together, and they're joyful, and they're they're praise, praising, in a sense. And it's those kind of reminders. Just just looking at it now fills me with joy. And it's those kind of experiences when we share with others how God has infused that joy into our life and has put those personal reminders out there that radiates joy outward, not just to you and to each other, but as you leave here, then perhaps you are reminded of a way that God has infused joy into your life, or as you share something you've heard that, that brought you joy or made you laugh, and it, it exponentially radiates outward and it infuses light into the midst of darkness and into the midst of things that 
that can drown our hope, but we have a choice of how we can counter those things that we see in the media and on the news. That is not the only source of what can inspire or alter how we feel. We can choose to put all of our attention into the news and to what others say, or we can choose to look for how God reminds us that God is in the midst of all of it, and that God is the one constant, and that God is the one who is the source of our hope in personal ways. And so is my prayer for you and for each of us that as we continue to take notice of the different sources of joy around us, that we will not just hold that for ourselves, but that we will allow that joy to radiate out from us as we interact with others. another psalm, David also wrote, I know God is always with me. I will not be shaken, for God is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad, and I rejoice, and my body rests in safety. God has shown me the way of life, and God will fill me with the joy of God's presence. That is something that we can always count on in our own lives. And through his writing of today's psalm, David reminds us that every time we share our stories of how we have personally experienced God's presence in the midst of our life journey, we have the opportunity to radiate joy and hope to others. I invite you to stand now embody our spirit and sing our hymn of response number 77 how great thou art
of the time in our service where we share our joys and concerns with each other. And so I'll bring the microphone around for any of you who would like to, to share out loud so that we can hold that in prayer together. Or if you're aware of somebody else who has a joy or concern that, that you are sharing on their behalf, I just ask you to raise your hand and I will bring the microphone to you. First off, um, I like prayers for Coeur Lake County, who just keeps getting hit by fires, and there's a 2,000 plus acre fire right now going on. It's um, in a pretty rural area. There's ranch homes, but not a lot of population, and so that's good, but there's four zones that are evacuated, and they, in the summertime, Lake County just can never get a break. So prayers for all of those who are affected by the fire and for the many firefighters that are fighting that place, the rich fire. And for that, we say, Lord, hear our prayers. And also how these fires impact and bring up memories for different individuals, including a member of our own church, Connie, and me and her grandkids, um, and, and the losses that they have had, significant losses. Um, and so we think, I want to hold them in prayer, um, just how this might be impacting them as well. And so we say, Lord, hear our prayers. And we have a joy. Uh, we're headed tomorrow for uh, Santa Barbara, which is where Richard grew up. And several of his siblings are there. Um, my brother is down there as well. I have been down in maybe nine years. Um, it's been about six years. For seven for Richard. So uh, we're going to really enjoy seeing family. My parents are buried down there, so I will, for the first time in, many, in quite a while, I'll be able to go down and visit their grave, um, smell the ocean, see the ocean, walk on the beach. And I've known Richard's family for 47 years, so they're like my siblings as well. So we're really, except for the ride, except for the drive down and back, we're really looking. Right, and for that connection and that time with family, we say thanks be to God. Anyone else this morning? I'll just add a couple that have been brought to my attention. One of those being Kirk Bilbro. Um, he just a few days ago had a seizure at home. Um, he is home from the hospital. They have not determined what, what the cause of that is. Um, but just want to keep Kirk and Lori in prayer um, and their family. So join me in saying, Lord, hear our prayers. And then also just want to keep in prayer Stacy, uh, Jelani's daughter. She's due in just a couple of weeks, but they've just recently learned that her baby is breech. They've been unable to, to turn him. So just as they're going through that time frame and thinking about that and that added um, wrinkle as expecting it while expecting her first child, um, let's just keep them in prayer as well. So join me in saying, Lord, Amen. hear our prayers. And then also wanting to keep in prayer Tyler, um, Deanne's son, and also Deanne as she continues to be a support for him and all that they are navigating. And so join me in saying, Lord, hear our prayers. I know that there are others who are on vacation right now and also spending time with uh, family and friends and, and the joy that that can bring. And so for all of them, for safety first, let's say, Lord, hear our prayers but also just for the blessing of that time together. Let's say thanks be to God. I invite you to bow your heads now as first I pray and then together we will pray the Lord's Prayer, which is also in your bulletin. Loving God, we pause just now to entrust to you all of the joys and concerns that we have shared and those that we still silently might hold on our hearts and in our minds.
God, as we navigate life, there are so many different experiences that we go through, so many things that impact whether we feel happy or not, so many things that can leave us feeling dismayed and overwhelmed and uncertain. Help us in every moment, even when we're feeling confident, even when we have certainty, even when we feel happy, to take notice of the reminders that you have provided along the way of your presence with us. Those things that help us to connect with that reservoir of hope and joy that you have placed deep within each of us. Help us to continue to be filled with that joy so that it overflows and radiates out to those around us. So that even as we collectively might be going through tough experiences, that together we can make a difference and to bring light into the midst of dark and uncertain times because of what you provide for us. We are so grateful for this and for the promises that Jesus has given to help us and to carry us and to give us a fullness of life. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we sing together our closing song, God Will Take Care of You. And that is number 130 in the United Methodist in NOMA. I invite you to stand.
blessing it has been to worship with each of you today. You're invited to join us across the parking lot and for our fellowship time where we have some coffee and goodies and um, just spend some time together. Even if you only have a few minutes, I encourage you to, to take that time to connect with each other before you head out into the week ahead. As you leave from our service, the baskets in the back await your offerings and gifts, your prayer requests, and any um, hug alerts that you might have filled out. And I just invite you now to bow your heads as first I pray for our offering and then also a blessing for the week ahead. Loving God, we ask that you bless all that we offer today. Not only what we give of our money, but also the offerings of our time and our talents. And now as you go from here this morning, may you remember that God is always with you, no matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way, God is right beside you, guiding and directing your path. So do not live in fear, but in joy, celebrating God's presence and singing God's praise. Amen. <laughs>